So Microsoft recently released AutoGen version 2, and this is essentially the upgraded version of Microsoft AutoGen. And AutoGen was one of the first Microsoft softwares that actually allowed you to interact and use AI agents on your device. Now, essentially, this video is going to be a deep dive on how to use AutoGen Studio, which is the second iteration of Microsoft AutoGen, how you can build multi-agent apps using this software. Don't forget to check some of the links down below if you are struggling, and let's take a look at exactly how Microsoft AutoGen works. So essentially, by this screenshot, you can see that this is the AutoGen Studio, and later on in the video, I'll be showing you some of the actual things that you can really really, really do. So essentially, they say that to rapidly help you prototype multi-agent solutions for your tasks, we are introducing Autogen Studio, an interface powered by Autogen. It allows you to declaratively define and modify agents and multi-agent workflows through point and click and drag and drop interface. And you, for example, you can select the parameters of two agents that will communicate to solve your task. You can use our user interface to create chat sessions with these specified agents and view the results. For example, view chat history, generated files, and the time taken. Then of course, you can explicitly add skills to your agents and accomplish more tasks. And you can also publish your sessions to a local gallery. Now, Autogen Studio is open source and can be installed via PIP. So let's actually take a look quickly at the installation process. It's actually fairly simple. And if you do have any issues, I have a one-stop solution, which I will show you all. So you can see right here, the first thing that you need to do is configure a large language model provider. It says here, to get started, you need to access a language model. You can set this up by following the steps in the Autogen documentation and, config and configure your environment with either the OpenAI key or an Azure OpenAI key. Now, essentially, it's just an API key. So if you want to get yourself an API key, if you want to get yourself an API key in order to use this, what you need to do is you need to head on over to this page. So essentially, all you want to do is you just want to sign in to the OpenAI playground area and what you want to be able to make sure you do is you then scroll down to here, then you just click API keys. Then you can see here that there are many different API keys that you can use and can create. Now I've created a couple of API keys and essentially when you create a new key here, it's going to tell you exactly what you need to do. So if I click create a new key here, um, you just name it as whatever you want. So I could name this as Autogen um, Studio. And then for example here, I could click create key. Then of course I have to verify the puzzle. And I'm not gonna lie to you guys, sometimes these puzzles are actually pretty hard. Like um, there was one previously that I did have to do that was really, really hard. But, um, you know, you just do the puzzle or whatever, and then you do get your API key. So I just wait for here, and then I get my API key. Now, I'm not going to show you guys what the key is, but essentially, um, you just copy it, you copy it, and then, of course, just put that into a text document so that you keep that safe. Because once you do create the key, you're going to be able to have to generate a new one because you're not going to be able to view this key again. So once you do that, just copy that, done. And then, um, yeah, so I can see Autogen Studio, and then um, last use never. And then, of course, I can just... Um, revoke the key, just delete it, or I can, you know, edit the key um, just by editing the name of that key right there. So once you have that key, um, then we go back to this and then you can see, you can also specify the model directly in the agent's configuration as shown below. I would, I would just rather not do that. But then of course, um, in the terminal, this is where you set the OpenAI API key. So now of course we have the installation, which is right here. So essentially all you want to do is open up the command prompt. And then all you want to do is literally just type in pip install Autogen Studio. If you actually go onto the Autogen Studio page, you can see that the text is actually right here. So if you just copy this, and then once you copy this, if you actually open up your command prompt, and then this is the command prompt, and then you just put that in there, just put in slash pip install. Now I've already, inst I've already installed it already, so I don't need to do this, but this is something that you do want to do if you do want to install it. And of course, this is running the application. So I do have it running, but once you do have it installed and once you do have um, the application ready, all you need to do is just literally copy the text. Like I said, a link will be in the description. So it'll be really easy to copy this. And then you just simply copy that, put it into your command prompt terminal, and then it will essentially give you a link. Now the link is usually here. So once you see the HTTPS, a local host, all you need to do is simply do that. So I'm gonna do that again, just to show you guys how it works. So I've typed in port Y, and then of course it's running. And then you can see here that it gives me the link. So I just copy this right here, uh, just get that, and then control C. And it says, uh, waiting for application startup, application startup complete, running on yada, yada, yada. Then all I do is I literally just paste that into a browser and you can see that Autogen Studio is loaded up. Now, if you are having any trouble with this, because I actually did have a few you know, troubles and a, true, a few niggles when I actually started this out, 
Um, I would just, you know, diagnose it with GPT-4. So if it says any kind of error, just get the error, paste it into GPT-4 and just tell them, look, I'm trying to install this program. So I just copied and pasted the entire page and I was like, I'm trying to install this, but I have encountered this error and just copy and paste it in and GPT-4 will solve it like it did for me. So that is something that actually does help me quite a bit. So then of course we have the actual use cases of what you can actually do with Autogen Studio. So the Autogen Studio UI is organized into three high level sections, which are build, playground and gallery. So I'm going to, you know, firstly walk you through, then I'm going to show you guys how to use everything. So first of all, we have the build. So essentially what build is, is really simple because this is where you can actually do your general agent workflow. Um, and this is where you have your general agents and you can essentially like build them and stuff like that. But like I said, these are just screenshots. So I'm going to show you guys in a second. And of course we have the skills area. So skills are basically the functions that describe how to solve a task. And in general, a good skill has a descriptive name such as, you know, for example, generate images, extensive doc strings and good defaults. For example, writing out files to disk for persistence and reuse. And you can add new skills to Autogen Studio that are via the provided user interface. And at, the, and at inference time, these skills are made available to the assistant agent as they address your tasks. And of course here we have the agent workflows, which is just a specification of a set of agents that can work together to accomplish a task. And the simplest version of this is a setup with two agents, a user proxy agent that represents, for example, it compiles code and prints a result and an assistant that can address task requests, for example, generating plans, writing code, evaluating responses, and proposing error recovery steps. And a more complex flow could be a group chat where even more agents works towards a solution. So for example here, like you guys can see, we've got the build, playground, and gallery. And for mine, currently there is a condition. So here you can see we've got build, we've got playground, and we've got gallery. And you can see right here, this Autogen Studio build multi-agent apps. And you can see here that these are the default workflows. So we've got the visualization agent workflow. So this workflow is used for visualization tasks. And it says here that visualization assistant to create plans and to write code. And then we can see the system message right here, which we can actually read. It says, your task is to ensure you create highly high quality visualization for the user. Your visualizations must follow Brex practices and you must articulate your reasoning for your choices. The visualization must not have a grid outline or box. The visualization should have an appropriate aspect ratio, for example, rectangular for time series data. The title must be bold, yada, yada, yada. If the chart is a line chart, and basically this is um, how we have our system message. Then of course, here we have our models. And then of course there are skills. So we can, you know, have different skills here. So for example, one skill that we have is find papers from Arxiv. I'm not even sure how you say that, but you can see right here, it uses the Arxiv API in order to find certain papers. So one thing that you could do is you could um, get it to research papers, and this is going to be a skill that it does have. Of course, generate images. I'm presuming that it does use DALI 3 to generate images here. Um, this is something that I'm going to show you guys how to do as well. Um, and you can see right here, response client generate images model DALI 3. So this is another skill. So you can give you know your agent uh, different images, which is really cool. Um, I mean, not different images, different um, skills, which is really cool. And of course, we've got fetch profile here, which is, you know, you can see right here, you know, fetch a different. Pro and so, yeah, this is a fetch profile. I'm not actually sure what this is, but it says fetches the text content from a personal website. Given the URL, yada, 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 this function scrapes the page and returns the text found within the body. So, um, yeah, that's actually what it does. Um, and you can actually add different skills. I'm guessing that you can create new skills. I'm, I'm guessing that you could probably um, use GPT-4 to create new skills. Um, and then of course you can see here a general agent workflow and this is a primary assistant default assist rate to generate plans and write code see um, helpful assistant user yada 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 then of course um, we can make new different workflows and of course we can um, have our we have our agents here so configure an agent that can be reused in your workflow um, and essentially how this works is that you can see that we have different agents and then different workflows so this workflow um, right here you can see is the general agent workflow. So we have the sender and then of course we have the receiver. Then of course we have here, we have the sender and then of course we have the receiver and then of course we add a new workflow. Um, and of course here we have the skills and if you want to add the new skills, um, I'm sure you're gonna have to generate the code. Maybe you could ask GPT-4 to do it. This is a sample skill replaced with your own skill function. I'm not exactly the very best at coding, so I don't know exactly how to do this, but I'm sure there are some other guides that I will leave linked down in the description below, but it does actually work. So um, now I'm going to show you guys some of the demos of this stuff in action. So this is from a different session where I was loading this on a different device and I will leave um, instructions on how to actually uh, do this. 
like a full list in the description or perhaps it may actually be on the AI Grid website because the description is actually pretty, pretty extensive. So essentially here you can see that this is autogen and essentially I'm going to walk you through exactly what was going on. So here you can see that I'm looking at the skills, fetching profile and the different, you know, skills that, you know, the each agent is able to have. You're able to just add different skills. So this is a sample skill that I added. Um, this was generating an ASCII art of a cat which is essentially just a drawing of a cat using um, text so um, essentially here you can see that the skill was retrieved successfully and that skill was there then of course once that is done you can see I'm looking over the agent specification I'm just making sure that everything is good just outlining you know the models all the skills you can see you can find papers on Arxiv generate images um, and all that good stuff so here was where I had a new session and I said create an ASCII art of a cat please and then you can see here that um, after some time it was able to generate this image ASCII art of a cat now there's some really cool applications that I do want to show you later on in the video which are really really cool and I'm going to show you those right now so essentially as this continued um, and that was the just code there and of course that's the python and then of course there was also this where plot a chart and this is basically um, just this is basically the default one that they do give you it says plot a chart of nvidia and Tesla stock price here today. Save the result of a file named NVIDIA Tesla PNG. So right here, you can see the agent messages, four messages in 31 seconds, and you can see NVIDIA and Tesla PNG, and then of course the corresponding code. So you can see exactly we do have the image, and this is of the real stock prices. So all of this stuff is actually really really accurate and of course it shows you exactly how it managed to do that so you can see the agent messages right there so it's figuring out exactly how to do that using certain libraries using this library um and yeah so it's really really cool so what was actually cool about this was that these agents were interacting with each other and you can see that um, one of them was actually saying that um there is a lack of certain libraries can you actually load them and then the second one performs it and then sends a report on the work so that's why this is a uh, pretty fascinating stuff so i think agents in the future are definitely going to be pretty crazy once we do get a more cohesive you know software that isn't so not really technically advanced but like just not as easy to use and you can see that there's a primary assistant and then the user proxy here so different agents are working together and of course here's where i asked for a candlestick chart for bitcoin and ethereum stocks and then here we can see that it is going ahead to complete that then after switching back to tabs we can see once again that this is completed now there was one really cool thing that um, i was able to do with this that i think you guys are going to find uh really really fascinating so i asked it um you know with dali 3 to generate to create a picture of a whale in space and of course you can see it manages to do that pretty quickly so picture of a whale in space but that's not the crazy thing okay so with these agents what you're able to do is you're able to generate like long pieces of content that's really cool for example here i asked it to create a pdf file with a presentation of the history 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 for example here i asked it to create a history of london so create a pdf file with the history of london so essentially here what i've done is i've said create a pdf file with a you know presentation of the history of london so you're about to see exactly what it was able to do so essentially right here it was able to give me uh, three files you can see in one minute and 21 seconds and then of course we can see this is a pdf file with the history of london then i said that i wanted more information because that's not really that much and then i also said that i want some pictures too so i've asked to get some additional pictures of historical places in london and then of course you're going to see that in around a minute or so seconds i was able to get you know all these kind of pictures of course they're generated with dali 3 it's not just going to like copy pictures from the internet but um you can see right here that this was really really fascinating especially the pdf2 so here we're getting some historical images i'm guessing that's of big ben in london and of course you can see the pdf is where i ask i need all this in a pdf file presentation and then you're about to see here that all of this is able to be generated in a pdf file presentation so you can see the tower of london then you can see buckingham palace then you can see westminster the abbey so yeah this is really really cool stuff and you can see that all of this is of course really real so there's many different things and many different um ways that you can interact with this agent multiple agent software i think it's really cool and i think it's a step in the right direction but in terms of what is coming next they do actually have a faq on what's actually coming next so in the future they detail that they're going to have complex agent workflows so we're working on integrating support for more sophisticated workflows such as group chat which is allow a richer integration between multiple agents or dynamic topologies which is essentially you know when you have multiple agents in the group chat you're going to be having 
multiple agents conversing on how to get a task done better. Also improved user experience. So it includes features like streaming intermediate model output for real-time feedback, better summarization of agent responses, information costs of each interaction, um, expansion of agent skills, work so they're going to add multiple different skills so we don't know what skills is going to be and of course community features so there's going to be options to share sessions and more easily among users and contributing to a shared repository of skills agents and agent workflow testing one two one two